Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm Patrick Barrett, founder and CEO at eCal, and we are right now the world's most advanced calendar marketing system, all born out of lovely Melbourne. And at eCal, we set about to solve three major problems for modern content marketers. The first, there is no simple way to create events content. Major TV networks still use integrated spreadsheets to produce TV guides, I'm serious. Second, there is increasing costs to marketing due to the continued fragmentation of the communications world in which we live. And thirdly, and a result of the second, it is very difficult to capture the time and attention of modern consumers. They are more mobile, they are more social than ever, and email is a highly inefficient communications channel. And so introducing eCal's dynamic calendar marketing system. It's easy, it's a cloud-based account of which you can easily create and manage your content. So it all lives in one place. It's integrated. We have eCal widgets for every one of your marketing channels, for your website, your mobile site, your mobile apps, your Facebook, and even QR codes for your print material. And it's completely dynamic. What eCal does is it creates a dynamic connection between the publisher and the personal calendar program of the consumer. It syncs with every major calendar program on mobile, desktop, and even social calendar programs like Facebook. And it's incredibly rich. We deliver rich information direct into the personal calendar at the right time, at the right place, with links to buy tickets, book hospitality, watch latest news, engage on social, etc. And it also acquires a fully profiled customer database for the client and deep behavioral analytics as well. We work with over 100 major sports and entertainment organizations across the world. We already do 55 to 60% of our business in the United States. We work with leading NFL franchises like the New England Patriots, the Chicago Bears, Washington Redskins. We work with Boston Celtics. We work with the whole of Major League Soccer and every team. Uh, we've cracked the college market. We work with NCAA and a number of major colleges. We work with Olympic sports like the USA Volleyball and major networks like Univision. Locally, pretty much every major sport to a degree in Australia and New Zealand uses eCal. And in Europe, uh, in about 12 hours time, we're launching with our first English Premier League team in QPR, which is hugely exciting for me. We're also in Asia with the World Sport Group. What we've been able to prove with these clients is case studies. And we've been able to um, prove that eCal delivers a higher value marketing return. Consider this New England Patriots. This was their first season using eCal. We delivered over 70,000 subscriptions at a subscription rate of over 70%. 98% opt-in to receive further sales and marketing communications. And our links generated over 6,500 click-throughs, generating in, in over $300,000 in sales. So eCal by the numbers is a business. We've got over 100 major clients. Our widgets receive over 2 million visits monthly. We're on our way to a million active users. We're not there yet. Give us six months. We, our service um, handles over 5 million calendar activities a day. And we've booked over $400,000 in revenue this financial year. The market we participate in is the enterprise communications market. And this is an incredibly active big um, and valuable market. You see this graph here is, uh, you know, plots the businesses in terms of the utility of calendar marketing on the x-axis and on the y-axis, the positioning of the business, whether it's B2B or B2C. You'll see that eCal is furthest right. It has the most advanced calendar marketing technology. The big boys on the top left, like Exact Target, Responses, HubSpot, are really large enterprise end-to-end -end businesses the top five of those businesses last financial year had a combined revenue of over a billion dollars. They grow at 20% year on year. And they've got a market cap of anywhere between 10 to 15 to 20 times their revenue. Um, Australia's own responses only last month got acquired by Oracle for $1.5 billion. The road to expansion for us is in fast international growth and entering new expansive vertical markets like billing, education, retail. We're also expanding the revenue model. Currently, it's a simple license model based, based on subscription users. We've got now sales referrals coming in, premium add-ons, sponsorship and advertising. And in the end, investors invest in people. 
in teams. Now, the last six months, I've put together a group of advisors and directors that is seriously world class, including Franz Madlener, the much awarded entrepreneur from Villa and Hutt, Matt McCann, the ex CEO and director at iSelect, Chris Bernard from Microsoft in the US, David Reimer from Yahoo in the US, and current CTO at Myob, Simon Rake Allen. And our dream is seriously big as well. We want to be for calendar marketing as constant contact is for email. And we want to raise two and a half million dollars to get to the next stage of our development. It's expansion capital at a pre-investment valuation of six million. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Okay, let's open it up for some questions. Again, Larry. The idea of uh, having marketing coming through my calendar is in one way very attractive and another way very scary. So uh, that one I think will be still out to the jury, so we'll see what the public says. The, the bit that concerns me probably the most is you look like you're a huge success by a million subscribers or well on the way, as you mentioned, a million subscribers. The list of clients is very impressive. Uh, 400,000 revenue, seriously, from a million users and uh, this sort of client base. Uh, I'd have to ask, is there a problem with the model? What is the actual commercial angle on that sort of numbers? It should be a hell of a lot more than 400,000. Yeah, I'll, I'll address also the first one, Larry, if, if you don't mind, um, and that is about content going into the calendar space. Um, the beautiful thing about eCal is that you choose your content um, and you choose where it goes. So the ability with eCal to actually choose to have the match schedule in your calendar or choose only to have home games or choose the corporate schedule or the community events, whatever you like, you've got that complete ability and control in your calendar space. And you can show and you can hide and, and show the calendar content as you like and you're still connected. Um, the second point about the model, our business has been about first in market. Um, this is a segment of the market that it's in its infancy. We invented the market and I have no qualms in saying it. Um, so in terms of the revenue following the client base, currently they, the clients pay an average of three and a half, four thousand dollars per annum um, for our license fees. Certainly the, the outliers pay a lot more. Um, but it's been about land grab. It's been about protecting the position and getting in there first, because we see this as a very lucrative and big market. Um, so that's been our strategy. Uh, so follow up to Larry's question. Do you, uh, do you see the business model, as you say, it's pretty modest income per very significant sporting club or, or yep. client you've got now. Do you see, once you get the land grabbed and you get the traction, do you see yourself squeezing up the, the, uh, the license fee income or, or tapping into other income sources from the clubs and, and, and locking them down for a long period of time? I'm, I'm wondering if somebody else shows up with a similar mousetrap and, and you want to get your income from four and a half thousand to ten and they're willing to come back in at four and a half, how do you, uh, how do you hold on to the relationship in that situation? Yeah, there's probably two parts to that. The first part is that eCal builds this wonderful dependency. The service is so good and it provides basically an event CMS for the, the client, right? It's, and, and in that builds a wonderful business efficiency that they didn't have before. Instead of sharing and sending spreadsheets from every department and, you know, and, and comparing what everyone is doing, now it's all housed in one easy platform for you to see. Um, the second part about the model is that um, we've got a lot more to give. Um, we've got a really great product that's best of breed at the moment. Um, we've introduced a new model that's based on user subscription packs. So with our, um, our license fees, you get so many user subscriptions included. As that dependency builds, as the market gains traction and more use to our product, you then buy more user packs as you service more customers. Um, that type of model has reduced our sales cycle from you know, a three-month sell to closing Washington Redskins uh, via WebEx in 19 minutes. Um, so it's been very important to um, increase um, and speed up the rate of sales for us to protect that position, get into the market um, first and land grab those. They sign up to li exclusive license deals with us for that particular service. So it's really important that we tie them up. I've got a question. Yes, other, can, I, can I just address the, the revenue? I know it's going to be asked to, uh, more so, but there's also, as you know, one of the slides mentioned, other revenues of which we're introducing so premium add-on features, we get a lot of analytics and producing those in a meaningful way to the, the client um, yeah, is other add-on revenue for us. 
We've also now negotiating deals for a portion of the sales referrals that we send to purchasing tickets, video subscriptions, merchandise, et cetera, with major players in the US, so that's very exciting. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I actually have a question about revenue, so it kind of works. In, in okay, so. good segue. Um, so you, you said uh, before that the guys in the top left, the big guys, got 10 to 20 times uh, multiple on, on uh, revenue. Yep. Your revenue is $400,000, yet you value your company at 8.5 post money valuation, which is greater than those big listed companies. So how do you justify that valuation? There's two ways valuations are done in our market. Um, the first way is tend to be a multiple of revenue, and we are in that range, 10 to 15 times um, at a six mil pre. The other way is to multiply the end users as well, which is another common methodology to, um, to uh, value businesses like ours. Um, and with the amount of users that we have, we jointly own those customers with our, um, our clients, um, and um, the minimum rate that those people are valued at in the market, absolute minimum would be 10 or $15. So again, we surpass that mark. Um, we have also been, um, you know, had some valuations done in the US, um, and the value of our business in the US is much greater than it is here. Um, and they're having the expansion plans that we do in the United States over the next 12 to 18 months will significantly raise our value. So in the next 18 months, we'll absolutely be confident of doubling or tripling that valuation at, in, in that time frame. If you had to look at the uh, competitors or the competitive set in the top left-hand corner, yep. what would you say your two or three uh, key competitive uh, factors are against that set? Yeah, there's different plays in that market. You saw they were kind of all colour-coded. The end-to-end -end market, it's really interesting, and that market graph tells you a lot, because those big end-to-end -end players, none of them have a calendar marketing tool. So it's a great opportunity for us. Um, there's also other calendar websites, event websites, that post events and calendars and share them socially, etc. That's more of a consumer play. Um, our play is really focused on the positioning with the rights holder and the owner, and we see that as the best positioning in this market. Fantastic. Everybody, please thank ECAL. Thank